morning. So I have a uh, student with me. This is Claire. She's volunteered to help out this morning with a few things. The method that I have for teaching the one-handed backhand, and I think it's um, it's it, it, it's easier than a lot of people believe it to be. Uh, and because of that, um, a lot of people neglect it. They go to the two hand. They think they need the support that's there. I'm going to have Claire. Um, her tennis background, uh, very little. Um, she plays uh, just on occasion, maybe two times in the last year she's come out. She's actually hit some balls. Um, and she did play when she was younger. She's athletic, so she has a natural ability to, um, uh, her, her skill sets, she has a natural ability because of that to kind of pick up techniques, tennis technique, requires attention and uh, um, I think on that note we're also going to look at consistency and we're going to look at uh, methods to remain consistent and I've said this before on my other videos the pace of the ball roll I can't say it enough when you strike the ball for consistency want to keep that ball in play and reduce the number of hours, uh, I'm sorry, to reduce the number of errors, the pace of the ball rule is your intent when you strike the ball is the same pace or less that the ball is approaching you. It will still go out fast, but it's your body's intention when you strike it, the same pace or less, never more. If I'm aggressive, hitting a slow ball and I'm too aggressive with my body, my errors go up. I may make it, I may not. Let's hit a little bit. Let's see how Claire is hitting on the court and I'm going to pick apart a few things and uh, we'll go from there. All right, we're going to look at uh, Claire's backhand. I'm going to feed her a couple two-handed backhands just to see what her feet are doing. That's the first thing I want to look at. And remember on a two-handed backhand, the racket goes out with the left leg, it stays, it goes back when the right leg goes forward, back, and then as it goes through, we turn into it and let the left leg come forward. I'm gonna hand feed her three or four balls. She stayed in frame for you to see that because as a coach what I would say the pace of the ball rule didn't apply there and Claire made one or two of those shots and she was trying really hard and that's what all players are doing they're trying really hard and trying hard in tennis means slowing down so I'm gonna tell Claire I'm gonna feed her another uh, six balls here I want her to consider her effort and to use the pace of the ball rule to strike the ball with the intent of the same pace or less. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, remember Claire hasn't played tennis for a long, long time. She knows her technique from uh, a junior. Back up a little more there, Claire. Back up a little more. Oh. Yeah, I want you to look at the phase of the ball and wait till it's an after. After. Okay. Flat. There you go. That's going to slow you down a little. Very nice. That was
was so much better. Yeah. And that last shot had all the power that you needed necessary. As a matter of fact, she struck that ball just as hard as she did when she was muscling it by slowing down with the pace of the ball rule and coming through the ball, making good contact. Uh, she was able to drive that ball accurately and reducing her errors. Now, there are some flaws there in her technique, and there's, there's going to be always something that we need to work on. But I'm going to bring her forward, and we're going to work on how I would show somebody the one-handed backhand. And we'll just see. We'll kind of compare her two-hand or her one-hand. Uh, you know, she doesn't have a one-handed backhand, so let's, let's see how that looks. Come on over here for a second. So what I'm going to have you do first is we're going to use that continental grip. You're going to hold the racket with your left hand in the throat, just very light. And as the ball's coming, you're going to, as if you're extending your right arm, not your left, yeah, and just have it out to the side in front of you. I'll turn this way so you can kind of see on camera what that looks like. And you're going to put the racket out with your left foot. So let me back up so we're in frame a little bit. So let's back up here. Racket and left foot. We're starting low. There's many different ways that we can look at the path and advance to, but we're going to start with the racket low for contact. So racket is almost tipped a little bit to the side. Left leg and racket. As the right leg goes back, that's when the racket goes back with you and you're looking kind of over your shoulder and then you're going to swing and it's all arm. There's no body and it's not an elbow. There's no elbow to hit the ball. It's coming from your shoulder. Let's look at that again. Left leg and racket. Racket is out here. I'm lined up with the ball. This is my, this is my guide. I'm lined up with the ball. The, the left arm takes the racket back as I step forward with the right, and then I swing from the shoulder. Now, it's quite interesting because to get to that point, we're going to do something very unorthodox. Claire's going to come stand here. She's going to be looking backwards, back here at the fence. Give her something to, uh, to look at or to stand on. She's not even far enough. I want her feet completely backwards and awkward to the court. You're going to stand here like this and you're going to hold the racket in that first position that we were in. Gather up some balls here. Now there's a, there's a, a funny little concept here that I tell my new students. Early on the backhand, late on the forehand. It, I'm sure somebody's going to comment about, well, wait a minute, we're supposed to be hitting it out in front on the forehand. Well, new students take that too literally, and they're way out in front. But if I put my racket in a backhand position I'm hitting, well, the racket is going to meet the ball before the ball meets me. If I turn around this way and I swing, the ball's going to meet me before it meets the racket with that continental grip. It's going to be different for the Eastern and the Semi-Western, but we need a, uh, a, a, a point, a foundation to start from. So late on the forehand, early on the backhand. And that just helps my players understand that they're going to get jammed if they're waiting too long to make that contact point. And this little exercise helps with that. Go ahead and get on that line there, Claire. Let me move this back an inch or two so hopefully you guys can see this. There we go. Claire's going to look over her shoulder. She's going to extend her arm and she's going to hit this with her shoulder from behind. Okay. okay. Now, we're also going to do this. We're going to make sure you're not curled. Oh, okay. There you go. Okay. All right. Notice the racket is should be able to hit this up a little bit. So like that? Yes. Okay. Ready? Oh, there it is. Okay. Perfect. 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 <laughs> We're not worried about exactly where it's going. That was excellent. Oh. Look how far away Claire is from the ball. Oh, that's a little too that was a little too far <laughs> for her. Comes from her shoulder. Nice and easy. Ooh, that was perfect. Smooth. Oh, 
beautiful. We don't need to muscle these to get that action. That's it. Look how much easier and smooth that first swing a second ago, too aggressive. It needs to be smooth and easy. That's perfect. That's perfect. Good grief, you think you'd had a one-handed backhand. <laughs> It doesn't take much to send that ball really far. I'm gonna change the direction here so you can see this a little more. And remember, this exercise is just a feel exercise. Claire needs to feel what that's like to turn and use her arm. Where the mistake players make on the two-handed backhand is they're facing the ball and they're doing this. They're using their elbow to snap at it. You need to turn, get that shoulder, this is the exercise to do it. She backwards to her target, smooth. success in learning the one-handed backhand and it's extremely easy to do but I don't see many players in this position or getting to this position it's further than she would need to be if she's actually playing but she needs to feel what it's like to be what I call backwards to the ball and, and it greatly enhances the success of your swing because it's encouraging you to use your arm swinging from the shoulder, not this elbow snap. Smooth. Excellent. Smooth. That's it. And look how far she's hitting behind her. She's hitting over there into the ad side of the court and she's facing backwards. She's facing the fence. She's facing you guys. Here we go. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now she's starting to turn just a little bit. So let's let's move forward. Take your racket since mine's got all those balls. She's going to step out with her left leg a little further than she should, really facing this way. We're going to break it down by continuing to stay backwards to the ball. So she's going to turn much further out. She's going to step again further than she should and then take a swing at that ball from behind. Breaking it down further than she really needs to be, turning further than she needs to be, because when she's playing, she isn't going to turn that far. But we need to train by going beyond the position where she should be. Now with her left leg, she's turning further than she needs to, and it's all arm backwards to the ball. We do things in tandem with our arms. And there's a time when that left arm is so big. We see this with players, but we see that extension so far and aggressive that sometimes it's causing us to be overly aggressive in our follow through. Federer's got it. Yeah, we're not fed at Federer. If we drop the left arm a little bit lower, it's encouraging less of a follow through beginning before you make good contact I think that's more important I don't want the left arm to be too high which encourages an out of control long swing that's why until we're experts at this so I'm going to tell Claire she's turning she brings that right leg over the left arm's going to stay a little bit low down here if we go and look at examples Wawrinka excellent example that he still has a long follow-through but there's something about the lack of control when they're both out here for beginning and new players. You know, let that evolve and let's find out what your style is. And for now, let's keep the left arm down as she swings through. Now I'm still gonna encourage the pace of the ball rule, especially for practice. Um, there's this intuitive belief you need to overhit and swing at the ball to get it to do anything. That's when we make errors. It's amazing how little you need to do to drive the ball. 
Here we go, Claire. Let's see how that goes. Okay. Smaller steps. Okay. Left leg, turn. That's it. And how aggressive was that swing? Too aggressive. Left, right. Good. Now your back swing is going a little too far. Okay. You can shorten it a lot. Good. Now, Claire's wrapping that that uh, racket too far back in her back swing. So let's look at how I'm going to correct that. She steps out with her left leg. I want her to keep the racket here because the back swing has to be connected to the forward swing. So I'm going to tell her, let's, let's maybe not turn quite as far as she is. She's still backwards to the ball, but I think that might solve this problem of her wrapping it around too far. So she needs to pause and wait. Back swing, forward swing are connected. Let's try that. Everybody's going to need variations in their instruction. You can't stick with the same thing over and over again. It's uh, uh, not like we're playing charades and you're doing the same gestures over and over again and expect somebody to get it. You've got to change the ideology and the way of thinking and hopefully your students will pick that up. Left leg, right leg, easy, easy, fast, easy. Small steps, small steps. That's beautiful, small steps. Beautiful, that's the technique, small steps. That's it. Let's get a Let's go. Left. Right. Correct. Left. Right. Good. No, don't rush it. Don't rush it. Right. Don't rush it. Keep your eye on that ball. Oh, too big of a swing. Too big of a swing. Don't think of it too much. Left. Right. Very nice. One more round and then we're going to look at feeding balls. Left and hold it. Right and through. Beautiful. Left and hold it. Right and through. Good. Left, right, through. Smooth swing. How fast is this ball when I drop it? Yeah, it's not fast. Base of the ball rule. Base of the ball rule. Excellent. Doesn't mean you're going to hit it soft. It means your body language when you hit it keeps it under control. Left, right, through. the left arm down, left, right, there you go. With the left arm down, it's a little more controlled. It puts the brakes on the joints, and it doesn't allow the arm to be a little bit wild in the swing. Let's do a couple more. Left, right, excellent. Left, right. Okay, this looks pretty good for somebody who didn't have a one-handed backhand. Uh, two-handed backhand that wasn't even as consistent as she is now. So I'm gonna change position. I'm gonna go out a little bit and I'm gonna feed her. Uh, and I'm gonna feed her from behind her a little bit. From this position, I'm feeding her over this way so that it's really encouraging her to be backwards of the ball. Get out of the way. I want her to hit the ball back in the same path it's coming to her. That's very important. We don't want to look at changing direction of the ball yet. Uh, that comes a little bit later as we're understanding how far we need to turn in relationship to the next direction if we're going to change it. So let's see how that goes. Okay, so back in the direction it's coming. Now I want you to wait until the phase of the ball drops. a lot and we forget to look at that as a coach. Again, if it's out here, 
Well, our arms work in tandem. It's really encouraging the right arm to swipe at the ball and be a little more aggressive than it needs to. Let's slow that down. Get the left arm down with your student. They can evolve from that later and start bringing it up. Very nice. Very good. Very good. One more. There you go. All right, here we go. Smoother. Softer. Yeah, it's even too aggressive. Softer. That's it. That's the tempo that matches the pace of the ball. Pace of the ball, same pace or less. Wait for it. Good. Wait for it. Good. It's arm, not body. Very nice. Very, very nice. It's arm, not body. Good. Excellent. Excellent. That's all right. Beautiful. Very nice. Arm, not body. Good job. Turn backwards to the ball. That's it. Think backwards to the ball. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Very nice. That's one more good one. Almost, almost, smooth. Pace of the ball rule, that corrects any of that. Excellent, here we go. Good. Backwards, backwards, backwards. Yes, that was much better. Your right leg was starting to drift into the ball a little bit. We want to maintain that back. This is really how I move my students forward with that one-handed backhand. It's something that I to try, and that's learning how to strike the ball from behind initially to get that feel and that contact point and allowing the arm to do the work and not the the, the wrist or the elbow flicking at the ball. Um, I, I think that's quite impressive after we looked at Claire's two-handed backhand and you know, she's trying too hard, pace of the ball will definitely kind of fell apart there and then when she started identifying it, it helped. But I think her one-handed backhand was a lot better. And let me ask, was it difficult to do? It felt good. Felt good? Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, I think a lot of people are just fearful that I don't have enough strength to do it. Well, I think it's a failure in understanding the technique.